Hi, this is Steph from DebtFreeSmang.com and we're here to talk today about once a month freezer cooking and how you're going to plan and prep for that. We're actually going to be doing a video series on once a month cooking or freezer cooking as some people call it and different ways that you can save money by planning ahead and maybe not even saving money as much as you're saving time as sometimes as well. And so we're going to talk today about planning for your once a month cooking and making your list of items and different ways that you can save even more when you go to do your freezer cooking. And the first way that you're going to save more when you freezer cook is by purchasing items that are on sale or that you can get really low cost. For example, in my local area we have an Aldi which is cheaper than almost pretty much any other store even with coupons. I'm able to get uh, soups and different things for like 60 cents or less. So if I'm going to be making some soups or stews that I'm going to put in my stock pot and freezer cook and put them into smaller containers that I'm actually going to be saving more not using coupons. So sometimes with the with the once a month cooking you might actually save more money if you can find items in bulk or at a store like that where it's cheaper. But make sure you're costing out your units so that you know for sure that you're definitely saving money. Write down the prices at the different places so that you know. So basically when we freezer cook uh, we like to do at least one or two soups or stews we also do some kind of casserole and then also usually some kind of uh, meat item like sometimes we'll do I'm trying to think of a really good example we might do some meatloafs and freeze them in advance and just put them in freezer packages so even buying uh, for us we can buy freezer bags cheaper at Aldi but if you don't have one of those in your area or a place where you can get freezer bags more cheaply then make sure that you're getting them on sale or on sale with a coupon the other, another great way is to base your recipes around the week that you go and start shopping to do for, it usually takes me about one day to sh a shop, or at least a morning, a good solid morning of shopping, and then the next day I do my cooking and freezing. And we have a deep chest freezer, we also have an extra refrigerator that we don't always run year round, it's just if we need it. But in the deep chest freezer a lot of times you know we'll we'll store a lot of these items and so I have to go to our local butcher shop which sells these amazing soup plastic tubs that I can buy way better than anything I could buy on the shelf at the store to store my soup in. So anyway, so when you're making your list, again, you can either take your recipes of your favorite and then kind of keep an eye out for when those items go on sale and stock up, or if you're, you're doing all your shopping at one time, then maybe you can take a look at the sale flyers that week and base your once a month cooking menu around what's on sale. If, for example, if ground round is on sale for under $2.50 a pound that week, then you're going to want to go ahead and stock up on that and maybe you're not even going to do once a month free cooking maybe you're just going to take it buy it in bulk maybe buy five pounds and ask the butcher to wrap up each separate pound that's what I do as well I might buy five pounds and say can you wrap them up in one pound increments and so I walk away with five different packages full of ground round so as you make your list you're going to obviously want to put all the ingredients that you're going to need but make sure that when you go to the store that you're buying all of the items as cheaply as you possibly can. And again, if you do this uh, about, we do this between two to four times a year. And so, but when we actually are, are, you know, in the off season or when we're not once a month cooking or freezing, then we'll actually, you know, buy items that we know we might use in that next once a month cooking when they're on sale. So like a month ago or two months ago, actually our local food line had an amazing deal on canned vegetables. And I bet I bought 40 cans of canned vegetables and we've already actually gone through half of those and the other half I'm gonna use in recipes for my once a month freezing. So there's a lot of planning that goes involved and I really felt that we needed to do a video simply about just planning your trip for your once a month cooking so that you're already saving money before we even get to discussing the recipes and all the different ways that, that you can that you can save with that. What we are gonna do is we are going to include a link under the, in the description under this YouTube video with all of our other videos in the series. This is the first one. So we also um, will include links in the series in the description so that as we go, you can just go right to those links below that. Something else again that you'll wanna be thinking about, like I said earlier, uh, when you do the once a month cooking or freezer cooking is you may want to do it with a friend. I've done that before where my girlfriend Lindsay and I, we, I'm pretty sure it was her, we, we froze, we made a bunch of meals, froze them and then split them down the middle or each of us took different different uh, meal items from that, that session. 
So sometimes you can go together with friends. Each of you brings, you know, different things that you're going to make, or maybe you freeze at home and then you swap so that you're not st stuck with 20 things of ham and green bean soup. You might swap for five of potato soup, five of ham and green beans. So cooking with a friend that, or swapping with a friend on your once a month cooking is another great way to save and have less work for yourself as well. Uh, so that's one thing that we want you to think about. And then the second thing, like I said earlier, are all the ways that you're going to store it. One of the best ways to store items and uh, even soups you can store are in freezer bags that lay flat or in the, the tin foil. If you have the tin foil or you want to go out and purchase some of those, maybe a tin foil uh, wrapping or I'm sorry, pan. Like so, for example, when I would make my lasagna, I would buy maybe four of those and then put the lasagna in the pans so that when I pulled them out, I could stick them in the oven and then I did throw the pans away. That might be your preference. Maybe you're more frugal than that even and you want to do it in a glass container or another container that you have, that's fine as well. But be thinking about how you want to store your items in the various containers. But remember that you can lay soups flat in, a, in the zipped Ziploc freezer bags. You can put the soup in, lay it on its side and freeze it flat because when you're freezing, you want to store as compactly as possible. And so really be thinking ahead about the storage that you have. And then when you put them in the bag, you actually can suck the air out with a straw and then that's how you get them to lay on their side and lay flat with no air in them. So these are just some tips and tricks and we'll be sharing more in each of the subsequent videos. We just wanted to give you a little bit to get you started. So have a great day and hopefully we'll have some fun cooking.